Absolutely delicious, it's making me hungry. And look how high we are going. These vines are so tall. Now we're up here. This should give you an idea of how big this place is. Wow, Gert, this is amazing. It stretches as far as the eye can see. Either way, it's pretty cool up here, isn't it? There's a lot of plants here. <laughs> it's much hotter up here as well, isn't it? Is that because all the heat is rising? The heat is rising and we're right in the sun. Fantastic. So these are pretty big at the moment, these uh, vines. Are they going to grow any bigger? Every week they grow about a foot and then we drop them a foot. Oh, and then so you cut them, do you? Uh, they're just going to grow, uh, keep growing up and we keep uh, winding the string around the plant to keep them upright. And every week the plant makes three leaves and another set of flowers. Fantastic. So we've just come up on an amazing machine to get us up here. What is this machine used for and what's it called? This is a scissor lift and we can spend all day driving up and down the lanes. <laughs> it's quite fun. <laughs> is this used for, um, I guess, com coming up here and tending to the top of the plants? Yeah, yeah we're trimming the, the flowers on the, uh, on the vines because we need to have the right amount of uh, fruits per vine. And uh, like I said, we trim the string around the plant to keep it upright. Lovely. So each of these little flowers, are they going to be a tomato at the end? Only when a bumblebee pollinates the flower, which we, which we call foraging, when a bumblebee visits the flower, it will turn into a tomato. Wow, so this is why these bumblebees that we can see flying around, you may not be able to see them, children, but there are quite a few bumblebees buzzing around up here. Um, and so they go over to the flower. They're attracted by yellow, aren't they, Gert? Um, so they sit on the flower, pollinate them, and then this will be a tomato. Absolutely, yeah. They actually leave a brown mark on the flower, and then we can tell that the actual flower is pollinated. So if a, if a bumblebee doesn't go over to a flower, what happens? Um, then the flower just closes, and it doesn't turn into a tomato. Wow, so bumblebees are very, very important, uh, aren't they? They're so important. <laughs> We're going to find out more about bumblebees later on in the lesson, children. Um, but once this has turned into a flower, how long does that take until it is an actual tomato ready to be picked, Gert? Um, in the midst of summer, it takes six weeks from a flower to a fully ripe fruit. Fantastic. So as the vines grow, so obviously the flower then gets pollinated, um, all the, uh, the, the ripe tomatoes are down at the bottom, we saw as we were coming up. Yeah, because uh, n when you look at this cluster of flowers, next week this cluster of flowers will look like this one, and this one will look like this one, and this oh, one wow. will look like this one. Because so we can see there's always these little baby green tomatoes already there, and you can see there's some flowers on the same, same little, uh, little stalk. So these have all been pollinated and they were growing into tomatoes. They've, they've been pollinated and you can see a teeny tiny little baby tomato in there. Can you tell? Wow! <laughs> Cute, eh? I, that's amazing. So like a tiny little green like bead that's inside this like little green section there. That's pretty amazing. So once, uh, once they do look quite orangey or, or, or red, um, is that when you need to pick them? Is it, is it always by sight that you know they're red or do you feel them? Yeah.